This is an old Raspberry Pi. And these are some really old IDE hard drives. Wouldn't it be hilarious if we could get this tiny marvel of modern engineering to boot natively off of these decades old time bombs of magnetic data decay? Well, I'm here to answer the questions that nobody asked and nobody needs the answer to. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy mashing up new and old technology into computational abominations, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Okay, so I didn't just have this idea randomly in a vacuum, because then I'd be dead. This is an experiment in service of a top secret and kind of really weird computer build that I've been working on in the background. Now, I don't want to give too much away, but it involves booting an old Raspberry Pi off of an old spinning hard drive. And not just any spinning hard drive, we need to find the perfect one with just the right clicky clacky 90s aesthetic. And I know this is possible. Modern Raspberry Pis can boot from USB, no problem. So really we just need to find a way to get IDE to USB and then get sufficient power to the hulking spinning disks of rust and magnets, preferably in the most overkill ridiculous way possible. Sounds great in theory, but <laughs> these drives are really quite old. So what's this gonna be like in practice? All right, so the first step is getting this Pi booting from USB, and it's actually fairly simple to do, but I don't wanna just hook this thing up to HDMI since we're doing a bunch of weird anachronistic crap here. So I have a better idea. Yep. Oh yeah, Raspbian looks awesome on this Trinitron. But then again, pretty much anything looks awesome on a Trinitron. So I'm gonna plug in our USB stick here. And then I'm gonna use the SD card copier. Oh look, I had a Ubuntu 2404 on there. Eh, not for long. Yeah, we're gonna copy from the SD card to the USB disk 3.0. Now, if this was a Raspberry Pi 4 or 5, we could just flash a special image to an SD card, turn it on with that card inserted, and it would change the boot order, letting us boot from USB first. But on this Raspberry Pi 3, we actually have to just edit a config file. So sudo vi boot firmware config.txt and then at the end of the file just need to add program usb boot mode equals one save that and now when we restart we should be able to boot from usb all right removing the sd card oh yes yeah, success Okay, now let me show you some of the hilarious drives we're gonna be experimenting with. I've got a bunch of kind of regular size drives out of various Macintoshes and other old computers, but I also have a laptop IDE hard drive, an enormous quantum Bigfoot hard drive, which if this works, I'm kind of leaning towards this thing. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have this. This is actually a spinning hard drive. It's a Seagate micro drive, four gigabyte hard drive in a CF card package that was given to me at VCF Midwest by my friend Sloopy Malibu. In order to get this IDE connector into USB with enough power, what I'm hoping I can do is use one of these IDE to SATA adapters and then use a SATA to USB adapter, like so. And then for power, well, we're gonna use a whole frickin' power supply here. We might as well just power the Raspberry Pi itself off of this. So I've got this Molex to USB power to give us a USB port into which I will plug a micro USB cable like so. 
Now to actually switch on the whole thing, well, we have to short out two pins on this, but to make that easy, I got one of these little guys, which is just a toggle switch connected to those two pins and then another wire to light it up. And voila, <laughs> this is now a computer. When I plug this in and then hit this switch, it will turn on both the hard drive and the Raspberry Pi. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, MyHeritage. I'm legitimately excited about this because I've wanted to do a DNA family history test for a long time. The kit was super easy to use, just a cheek swab and send it back. It literally takes two minutes. All right, my my heritage results are back. I am ready to explore. Hey, look at that. <laughs> North and West European. All right, that's my mother's side. Irish, Scottish, and Welsh. That's my father's side. Well, was not expecting that. I don't know who in my family came from here. Mesoamerican. Ireland, Donegal, look at all these little dots all over the UK. I was actually automatically connected with one of my cousins on there, just from my DNA results. Yeah, so this is certainly really interesting. I'm really excited to see that it kind of verified the Donegal story that came down through generations. Your DNA results will reveal a percentage breakdown of your origins across 42 supported ethnicities. Yeah, I'm really glad I did this, and I think you will be too. So make sure you scan that QR code here. My coupon code RETRO will give you a special deal, including free shipping. And thank you again, MyHeritage, so much for these really interesting results. Okay, everything is connected, power is connected. I have the SD card back in the Pi, so we can hopefully use the SD card imager. As soon as I flip this switch, it should power on both the Pi and the hard drive, or it will explode. Oh, there goes the hard drive spinning up, and the Pi is booting. <laughs> ah, bad ideas, they're the best. Oh yeah, it worked, it mounted the hard drive. <laughs> oh yeah. It's not stupid if it works, even if it's stupid. Yeah, low voltage warning, yeah, it's probably fine. The hard drive is making delightful hard drive noises. And I have successfully flashed 32-bit Raspbian onto the hard drive. Removing the SD card and on. Okay, well, not looking so good. The hard drive spins up for a second and then spins back down. No green light on the Pi. All right, let's try a different adapter here. This is actually straight from IDE to USB. No chain of dongles needed. This is probably a much smarter idea. Let's try to boot from it. Oh my God, it's booting. Look, green light on the Pi. <laughs> <laughs> and successfully booted into Raspbian 32-bit. Let's try to launch the web browser and see if it's painfully slow or if we can barely tell the difference over an SD card. Uh, this is feeling quite slow. There is quite a lot of hard drive access happening. Let's try Patreon dot com slash action retro. Yeah, this feels quite slow. Loading from hard drive. And it is really hitting that hard drive. Hey look, it's my cats. Okay, this ridiculous beast is the one I'm most excited about. It is a nine gigabyte quantum Bigfoot out of a Late 90s Compaq, it even says replace with Compaq spare part number here. <laughs> Look how much bigger it is than the three and a half inch standard size drive. And I'm hoping it is even louder. <laughs> Look at this beast. Oh, it's making some nice noises. 
All right, booting from the Quantum Bigfoot. All right, not only did this hard drive create a comically loud symphony of wonderful hard drive noises, it also took way longer to boot up and get to the desktop, which in our sick game here is actually a point in its favor. <laughs> Let's see what browsing the internet feels like. Good gravy did that take forever to even just open the web browser for the first time. And I guess it makes sense. This hard drive is only 4,000 RPM. Let's open our favorite frogfind.com. Well, this website at least is much friendlier towards vintage computers. Yeah, I'm really liking the uh, horribleness of this drive. But let's go from a comically big hard drive to a comically small one. Now to connect this tiny CF card sized hard drive, we're gonna have to use a couple adapters. We'll start with this CF to 2.5 inch IDE. This dongle, which of course will plug into this dongle. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Not convoluted at all. All right, powering on. It's making noises. Oh yeah, check it out, it works. Now, since we only have four gigabytes to work with, we're going to have to use a different operating system because even the 32-bit version of Raspbian requires, I think, six or nine, I think six. Let's pop Risk OS Pi on there. <laughs> and I don't think this even needs a fraction of that four gigabytes. The download is 0.1 gigabytes. This tiny hard drive is dead silent. All right, booting Risk OS from a 2004 Seagate microdrive tiny mechanical hard disk. Here goes nothing. All right, well, apparently it does not like booting from the microdrive or Probably more accurately, it does not like this huge honking combination of adapters. Well, even connecting this directly to a USB CF card reader doesn't allow it to boot. I guess this CF IDE hard drive just isn't bootable on here. All right, might as well test this laptop hard drive. And this hard drive is also only four gigabytes. So we will try Risk OS again. All right, well, it doesn't want to boot off of this hard drive either, so I guess it doesn't like this particular adapter I'm using. But that's okay, because you know what? These two hard drives are pretty quiet, which, you know, in any other universe is a benefit. But in our sick, twisted experiment here, well, that's a point against them and uh, disqualified. Okay, well, off camera, I went through a bunch of other IDE hard drives and I only found three that don't work. And I have to say, I think the winner <laughs> is this. Now, winner of what, you might ask? And uh, that's a good question. I'm not gonna answer it right now, but if you wanna have an authentic 1990s hard drive experience on your Raspberry Pi for some unknown reason, I can definitely recommend a Quantum Bigfoot. Although most of these probably aren't working these days. In any event, if you want to find out just what in the heck I was doing all of this for, well, you're just going to have to stick around. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. In any event, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and thank you very much for watching. And thank you again to My Heritage for sponsoring today's video. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Drew Hamlin, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rosansky, Graham, Greg from Hrutt King Mods, James Fryman, 
James Laurie, Jason Papaz, Jason Ezel, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowall, Nick Daniels, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, Veronica Explains, and Xantronics Industrial, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.